there's a lot of people out there who are overpaying for their architecture to be hiring an architect. And in a lot of cases, it's just not necessary because yes, most commercial projects will need an architect at some point if you're putting in for a permit and you need to be building the building and that's fine. But at the very beginning of a project, it's not necessarily about having an architect of record, someone who can put a stamp on a drawing, because very often it's really about figuring it out at a high level. It's about balancing your budget. It's about figuring out your budget, figuring out what pieces you want to put together, what you really need to put into it. So that by the time you get to an architect, by the time you do need an architect, you've got like a fully developed idea that they can actually help you execute and do a really good job with that, hopefully. But at the very beginning, I often see people who are frustrated. They're usually frustrated for a couple different reasons. It could be that they've invested. Somebody said, oh, you need an architect for your building. Great. So they'll hire an architect and they'll often end up with some kind of technical drawings that maybe even just way out of their price range. And so now they're looking at drawings that are like twenty or thirty thousand dollars, or maybe they even got an estimate for like a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to do this project. And they're just sort of thinking like, how do I even move forward with this? And is this even necessary? And very often the people I talk to and the people I work with have this idea that something's not quite right. And that can be either with their architects or with their contractors or whatever. And even if they can't put their words to it and don't really know how it should go, that's a big part of what I do with clients, which is really be able to see into the future with you, really be able to say, look, the pieces move around in a way that's unique to your situation, but generally speaking, it's the same pieces no matter where we are in the country, no matter where we are in the world. We need someone to draw it. We need someone to engineer it. We need whatever permit. We need a builder. You know, We need whatever specialty vendors are involved for the thing that is special to your facility, whatever it is. But these things all sort of get coordinated in a way that's unique, and that's how we can see into the future. And that's really why we have to start with a more high level organizing of a project. Because if we don't have that right, how can you possibly draw a building without having a very clear understanding of the budget for the building? And how can we possibly establish a budget for the building if we don't actually have a conversation about your business model, about how you're gonna be using it, about how big it can be based on you know what we're trying to do for your business and how much money you have to put into it. These are all things that very rarely actually come up with architects because architects aren't project managers. They don't work as project managers for owners, generally speaking. And I mean, generally like 99%. I'm an architect, but I also really have been working as a developer for over a decade now. And so I'm always working with architects, hiring architects, having clients hire architects. And there's a huge gap in the beginning of the process. So if you're someone who is feeling like they're confused with why is my architect saying this or why are they saying I need a $200,000 set of drawings or why did they build a building or draw a building that is two or three times my budget? Like, how is this possible? It's because the expectations weren't set up properly at the start. And in order to even set those expectations, that's where we need to balance your needs, your goals, your business model, your budget, so that we can have a very clear set of expectations for like, what is the building gonna be? What is the minimum viable building that we need to create so that we can have the outcome that is like the best outcome for you? And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of buildings that do need a huge set of drawings. It's just, in my experience and from what I can see, it's like 99% of them don't. And so if you're making the next fine arts museum or if you're doing something that's extremely complicated and needs a lot of coordination up and down the trades, mechanical and structural and architectural, if you need a lot of that stuff, then absolutely figuring it out, not only in drawings, but ideally in a three dimensional model in a 3D environment where you can really look at things and really understand it before it gets to the job site. I'm a huge advocate for that. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing any any buildings really anymore in 2D unless it's something that's so simple that it can just be done that way. But even then, you know, nothing I do is in not in 3D because it just always ends up showing us and helping us. And so, you know, there are ways to do this without having a huge drawing set, without having to pay 
you know, 10 to 20% or 10 to 15% of a project budget to soft costs for architects and engineers. Because again, if you need that, absolutely. If you're doing a museum or something very complicated, that makes perfect sense. But for most people, that's just not what they're doing. And even if the architects think that's what you're doing, I just can't tell you how many times in the last 20 something years that I've seen and heard people just saying, I just don't know what to do next because they've gotten this bill, because they feel like they've hit a wall where it's unclear how to put the pieces together. And that, again, is why I do what I do, because we can work quickly at the beginning of projects to put things together and figure out what the next steps are when to hire people, not only who to hire, but when to hire them. And these are all just strategies for you to think about as you move forward, because it's not just about, I want to make a building, I need an architect. There's a lot of work that has to go in before it on your finances, on your timeline, on your schedule, on your budget, on how's the money coming in, who are the investors, what's the output projecting going to be. These are all things that you know we can balance with sort of high level financial planning and analysis where we just sort of have your inputs and your outputs and we the building is the filter where everything goes through. That's really the way to think about it is like the building has to perform for you. It's not just a drawing or this thing. It is the filter where all of your decisions are going through it and the output whether it's like a quality thing, like what people can do with it or a financial output on the other end for your business, whatever it is, the building is the filter and we're putting money into that. It's by far the biggest investment you're going to be making for a project is that building cost. And if you don't get it right, it can be an anchor on your facility or on your business for years to come. You know, when you look at a five-year trajectory, which is what we do in a basic financial analysis and, and sort of breakdown, you know, we can see that if you overinvest at the start, you're really maybe not even getting that back until year five or longer. And that might be okay for you. But if you're not okay with that, we need to know that earlier. And we need to draw up a building that will perform for you and work in a way that you're happy with and that you're comfortable with as we sort of look into the future. And so how do we do that? We adjust the different dials, the dials of development, as I often call them, where we can adjust how much rent you're paying, how much you're paying for the building itself. You know, these are all different types of things. You know, how much is the landlord giving you? What is the condition of the building you're moving into? You know, paying a high rent if your initial startup cost is low, that might work for you. Or the opposite could be true paying a very low rent and paying a lot to build it out. That might work for you. It just really depends on your situation. It depends on the building. And there's so many different reasons why these things might be smart decisions in one way or the other based on the landlord, based on you, based on your goals. So it's about balancing them all. And the sooner we do that, the more we can just sort of move ahead, make decisions that we go, and the less we get to a stopping point where we go, oh my, that building is like way more than we thought it was going to be or way more than we budgeted for. You do not want to do all of that drawing work and then have to go back because when you go back like that, time and money, you're redoing work you've already done, which costs time. And almost more importantly, it really is the time, but it also does cost money, which especially when you're trying to get a business going, there's usually just not a lot of it to burn. Even people who feel like they've got a lot of money in the bank when they start, every single time, even with people who think they have a good budget, they always feel tight at the end. So we just have to be so careful because we don't want to be like free spending like it doesn't matter because I guarantee it will by the end, if not sooner. So this is the type of work that I do with clients because I see this problem every single day. And it's often the same story. And the pieces are generally the same. It's just how do we connect them and how do we relate them for your goals in your specific situation that's what allows us to see into the future to see the path forward to see the results downstream these are investments it's no guarantee but we can do a pretty good job of putting it together early and so if that's something interesting to you reach out and i'd love to talk to you about your project take care